Tiv Psachim, page 22, um, just a comment, pages 22 and 23 is continuation of a discussion that we start on page 21. I highly recommend it for um, those who just start with 22 or 23 to um, visit or for others to revisit 21 because page 21, Kaf Aleph, gives us the foundation to understand our daf. Anyway, Kaf Bet 22, five lines from the top of the page. Short abbreviation of what um, we left on 21. Um, we discussed the Machloket, the disputation between Chizkiya and Rabbi Abau. Our source of the uh, discussion is when the Torah used the term Lo Yeachel, it should not be eaten, Lo Tochlu. It means the prohibition against eating or and the prohibition against Hana'a, deriving joy. Meaning, the Isur Achila, the biblical prohibition against eating, is that including Hana'a or not? Chizkia does not bring a source for that. The idea of Achila and Hana'a. Rabbi Abau said that we have three sources Lo Tochlu, Lo Yaachel, and Lo Yochlu. So Rabbi Abahu said that Achila and Anaa, the way that we understand from Rashi, are one component. Meaning, according to Rabbi Abahu, it's all in one package. Achila and Anaa. So now the Gemara brings several questions and challenges on Rabbi Abahu's opinion. That he said that Lo Yachlu, even the Torah did not mention Isu Anaa small introduction to that one the Torah tells us in Bereshit in book of Genesis chapter 32 the famous story of the Ma'avak the wrestling between Yaakov the ancestors Jacob and the Malach Lucidly is the angel the Torah discusses um, that wrestling and they ended by saying Alken and the way we understand the Rambam tells us in the Sefer HaMitzvot the Sefer HaChinuch tells us and more that that apply not only for that particular generation but the future as well the prohibition against eating I think the right word is sinuous um, it's, yeah, it's a sinew, it's a root, I mean, they define it here as it's a sciatic nerve. Sciatic that nerve. That runs down Hold the, uh, yeah, the fat, Many so. people suffering from that, right? Yes. <laughs> anyway, so they said here, here is the question. The Torah tells us, which is a separate subject, that it's not applied only to the ancient ancestors of Yaakov Avinu, but it's go throughout the generation. We are forbidden to eat the sciatica nerve. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, the Torah said, Lo yochlu, meaning the children of Israel, us, are forbidden from eating. The Torah did not mention anything related to deriving hana'a, deriving joy. Mativ Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha. Yitzchak Nafcha, come and ask a question. Um, when I visited the North Israel um, uh, not long ago, so we went to all those uh, holy sites on North Israel, and one of them is this um, great name. So he asks us the question as follows: Here is a source that we can challenge Rabbi about. The story says that the prohibition against eating Gidan Asheh, from now on I'm using Gidan Asheh uh, instead of using this uh, word of sciatica nerve or... Yeah, I guess the, they say the direct translation is displaced sinew. 
Sin- I say, said yeah, sinew. Yeah, you said that, but it, right. they say specifically it's the sciatic nerve. As sciatic, as well. okay. That's what it refers to, but Good. literally it Good. translates as displaced sinew. Good. So. <laughs> so the Torah used the word Rachmana, meaning that it's uh, like Rachmana. It's the word of the Torah is full of compassion. So the Torah tells us that uh, as a result of that ma'avak, of that wrestling between Yaakov and the ma'ach, the Torah said that's applied to a future generation. So the Gemara in Chulin, Utnan, that's a Mishnah in Chulin 93, and later the Gemara in Chulin, page Kuf, 100, שולח אדם ירך לנוכרי וגיד אנשה בתוכו מפני שמקומו ניכר. A fellow has um, an animal. And he has a fellow, a non-Jew. The non-Jew, this prohibition does not apply to them. We said many times the prohibition for or the mitzvah to apply to the non-Jew, the universal one, is only the seven Noachai laws. So now you have this fellow who sent a, a full, let's call it Gidan for our understanding. So he sent a full animal, including that part, the Gidan and he is not concerned um, that, um, that um, the other fellow see that he does that and and what what he he think that this fellow this non Jew maybe go and and sell it or resell it to a fellow Jew and he maybe uh, doesn't realize that he need to have the niku which means that this part of the gid wasn't taken because you see here. The Torah did not say that you are not allowed to derive joy, the right benefit, from, um, from that part. The only part the Torah said is the word lo yochlu. Lo yochlu le'echol, meaning to eat it. Mm-hmm. So now we ask, we challenge Rabbi Abau, because what Rabbi Abau said, Rabbi Abau said that all the three, lo tochlu, lo yachel, lo yochlu, it's all included, Achila and Ana. So, according to Chizkiya, it's not the question, right? Muta Ana. But Rabbi Abau, how he explain it? Metaretzet Gemara. Here you have the 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 Gemara answer. They said Kasavar Rabbi Abau, Kshutra Nevela, He Vechelba Vegida Utra. Rabbi Abau hold that when the Torah used the word Nevela, Nevela can be Basar, the meat, can be Gidim, can be uh, or the skin, it's all included with the Gid with that senior, Sayyadik Anel. So it's all Mutar Be'ana, you can derive benefit from that. So it's no, we cannot differentiate between Nevela and Kshira. We don't have any difference because since this part of the dead body of the animal is allowed to derive benefit, so Lo um, Yochlu, um, so you derive from that not only for that animal, you can derive from that to any kosher animal that uh, he can derive joy. But the Tzlach have uh, in the Or Hadash, it's, uh, it's uh, um, have a, lot, a lot to say about it. Next. So now we're going for the famous Machlokit in Chulin. It's a page Tzadik Tet, 99 in Chulin, page 100, etc. We are dealing with vignette. Vignette is in a French word for abbreviation. Hani Chaleman de Amar. יש בגידים בנותן טעם אלא למאן דאמר אין בגידים בנותן טעם מעיקה למימה Imagine we, pre, we and Ashkenazim have this chant the Sfarim have chamin so you take this gid so you have this נותן טעם you have this taste 
-hmm. but that taste is not the same as basal, as a real meat. It's different. So there is an opinion that said by just using this ghid, these sinews, it's already have tam basal. There is already taste of a real meat. So when you use the word nevela, meaning dead animal, it's included the part of hana'a, deriving joy, deriving benefit. But some, the other one who said that that gid is not part of notenta. How do we explain um, 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 now uh, the Rabbi Abau? Because what happened? If you tell me that you put this big pot with the chant and the heat changed the the, ta, the tam, so me, mele, what do you understand that everything, all the tavshil, everything that is in that pot is forbidden. But there is a machloket there in chulin. Some said yes. Some said that it's like a little piece of etz wood, and it's not part of that. So. The 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 um, the um, Rajba over there in Hulin have a long explanation, but since there is a machloket, how come here Rabbi Abau said um, um, that it's applied to both here? How do we exp he explain this? So Mansha Matli de Amar and Begidim de Noten Tam. Who is the one who said that the gid is not involved in the taste? It's like a little etz. Rabbi Shimoni. The Tanya. Ha'ochel mi gid anasheshel be'mat me'ah. If someone take a non-purified, uh, um, tame, a, a behema. So what happened is, Rabbi Yehuda mechayev shtayim, Rabbi Shimon poter. There is a concept which is called Malkot. It's like literally meaning lashes. So one said, Rabbi Yudha said that he deserved twice. Why? One, because he eats Behemat Mea, non-pure um, so animal. Is what? that specifically talking about a non-kosher domestic animal? They're referring to an animal that's in, that was impure for sacrifice or for... Um, in that sense, is is for sacrifice because um, we're not talking about nevela or trefa. Okay, we're talking so we're about talking, tmea. Yes, we're not talking about the uh, gid from, for example, a chazar or something like no, that. No, no, okay. no, no. Okay. Uh, and the second one is um, 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 basically Rabbi Yudah Hall. This the Gemara in Chulin said in page one hundred B. They said that he he owed that gid and asher applied to both. Regardless if the behema is is the hora or tmea, he said that it's he, considering a tam, he considering a test and a taste and, and it's part. Rabbi Shimon exam. Why? He says totally, not even once. Why? Behema tmea, he said, it's not considering no ten tam, it's not considering meat. It's like he all that gid is like keresh. It's it's like wood. It mm -hmm. doesn't care any any mm -hmm. any gid and ashe exempt because the Torah forbidden only gid and ashe that come out of a pure animal. But other than that, it's not applicable. So Rabbi Shimon Hach Enamet de Asar Banar de Tanya gid and ashe mutar Banar de Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Shimon Oser. So it means Rabbi Shimon forbidden because the lo yochlu, they should not eat, it's included also Hana'a, and basically he is the same as Rabbi Abau. So you, you see here that the Mishnah, when they allowed to use a full yarech, full part of the animal, and give it to a non-Jew, it's according to Rabbi Yuda. Toss for the ask, how come you put it as according to Rabbi Yudah, because Rabbi Yudah forbids in Avodah Zarah page 20 to give a, a gift to the, to a Nohri. So this, they explained, the Tosfot explained that he is uh, 
uh, it's a good friend of his, uh, he did a favor for him, so it's uh, given exchange favor. But the Gemara in Chulin tells us in 99 that it's not, considering Gid is not Notenta. So, uh, therefore, what we understand, that according to uh, our discussion, Rabbi Abau hold that Gid and Ashe is forbidden to have any type of um, benefit, any deriving any joy. So, the, so now they have several challenges of Rabbi Abau. They try to attack it from different directions. So they ask, give an example of blood. If you pay attention every morning when we use the Ezeu Mekoman before Bishmel, when we use the Korbanot, so a person bring a Korban, bring an offering for the Kapara, for the atonement, and the Mizbeach, and he's go for the external altar. So they, we have the sprinkle of, of the blood that's happened in the sanctuary in the Hechal. And the Torah said in Leviticus 17, call nefesh mikem, any type of soul of you not allowed to eat them, to eat blood. So now the Gemara said in Yuma 58, Eilu ba'ama, Beautiful. The Gemara said, when we use the, the Ezeo Mekoman in the morning, so we said Shtaim Shem Arba, two that there are four. So you have this process of ritual that you do it for the internal sin offering, the all this ritual and the external offering, but then you have left over. So they have a special in our simple language pipe that go out of that area and it's coming from the courtyard outside of the sanctuary in Azara. And they go to a river called Kidron, and that river, it's um, uh, go out, and they listen carefully. They sell it to people who involve with taking care of the gardens. You mm -hmm. know when you That's plant fertilizer, fertilizer, mm -hmm. and it's very healthy. Mm -hmm. Using blood is very healthy for it's got a lot fertilizing. Of minerals and iron and, and all right, kinds right, of things. Right. That's good for now. The body, listen. So. The idea of Meila, it's not biblical, it's rabbinic. Mm. The rabbis put a gader, a fence, and they said that if a person's deriving benefit, you own a property, and you take this blood for fertilizing your property, and you may say, come on, it's left over. So biblically you're right, but rabbinically we say that that's called Meila. You have to pay for that, to the um, uh, to the Kodashim, to the, the temple, yeah. to the temple for using it. Mm -hmm. Rashi elaborate on that, and Rashi here not only elaborate but he used the word kloma, and he said kloma asul not men belo damim ipnei shem hegdesh. So um, uh, Rashi here tells us, and I explain it in my book, that. Um, Basically, you see the same as in Rashba and Meir in Tosfot. The whole idea that it's it's considering some type of resonant of Meila in a biblical term, which means you basically in violation for not paying the Beit Hamikdash for that um, using it for fertilizing your property. So now here's the point: the blood. What we said, the blood, you can derive benefit from the blood, even they use the word Lot Tochal. So now it's a question, Rabbi Abau, because what Rabbi Abau, uh, we understand in the simple way that you can go ahead and use it for fertilizing. Mm -hmm. um, the Pnei Roshua said that even that it's not a usual manner of driving joy, there's still an issue here. Um, so. The whole idea that you need to involve with payment, it shows that um, uh, when it's come to Hegdesh, there is a, um, a concept that uh, of payment, even the Isu Ana'a, the prohibition of driving joy, benefit, is not applicable. But Noida Biuda, in your Idea Tanina Samech Bet, um, explained it at length. 
So here we said, respond, Rabbi Abal responds, and he said, Shani dam di itkash lemaim. Here we make a hekesh, in sort of juxtaposition between blood and water. Dichtiv lotoch veno laaretz ishpechenu kamayim. Torah said in Deuteronomy 12, you shall not eat the blood, you spread it on the, on the um, floor like yeah, water. Yeah. So ma mayim mutarin av dam mutar bana. So even that dam kodashim you don't compare to water, Tosfot tells us because they use the word lo tochal, so it's the whole idea of, of blood, uh, it's not involved with the driving benefit. It's the idea that um, uh, regular water you can derive um, benefit from that. So they said, if you remember when we studied the, the Chaga Sukkot, the festival of Sukkot, they have seven days, and you have this water that you put a Nisu Hamayim, you put the water together with the wine every morning. So they said, um, um, we learn in the Sukkot that you use the, this water in Klei Shared, they have Kedusha Taguf, and it's a Nesa Be'anoa, it's forbidden to driving uh, benefit, Amar Rabbi Abau, Kamayim, they use the word with Kaf, meaning rov mine. It's like most of the water. Kamayim, it's like um, uh, Yavet said, is like the usual mine that we um, use. Midei, so the Gemara reject Midei rov mine Kti. The Torah did not use the word rov, they used the word ka. So al amarabashi kemayim anishpachim velo kemayim hanisachim. So it's uh, considering the same as uh, water that um, uh, that pour out, which one may benefit, and not like water that is offered as a libation, which means water offered on the altar, described using the term libation, and not using the term poured as found in the verse. So ve'ema kemayim anishpachim lifnei avodah zara. That it's uh, the, the same as mine that poor, what of poor before idolatry that is forbidden to drive benefit. It's called Tilkovet. The Rambam Mimil Chod Abu Dazra explain it. So they said, Hatam Nami Nisuchi Krei Dichti Vishtu Yei Nesicham. So the, the response of Gemara, it's the source of Rabbi Abau, that also blood is Mutar Be'ana, and you learn it in a Hekesh to the water. 22b, So according to Chizkiah that said that eating, it's not included um, um, of Isu of driving joy. So how do you compare blood to water? So the Rabbi Yochanan, the Rabbi Yochanan, the Rabbi Yochanan, the Rabbi Yochanan, the you remember we talk about the seven mashkim, mm -hmm. the, all the difference like water, wine, uh, oil, olive oil, blood, and, and milk, and the, the honey, etc. All these seven liquids. The tumor, right? right? Mm -hmm. So they said, The Torah said it clearly in the volume in the, the, the Deuteronomy 12. The, the, that blood that was poured like water renders food susceptible. And the one which is not poured like water does not render food susceptible to ritual impurity. So you see here both Gidan and blood. Rabbi Abao said that that's applied to both Hana'a and Achila. And it's applied to all different, Kol Sugiana, all different. So now the attack, another attack. You see a constant attack on Rabbi Abau point. every minachai. The Torah said it does apply also to a, one of the seven Noachai uh, laws. It's eat the prohibition against eating part of the animal when they're still alive. So they said that's regardless if if um, it's uh, it's uh, totally alive or, or par yeah. partially etc. The Torah said in Deuteronomy 12, you should not eat together the soul with the blood. Rabbi Nathan says, You have a Nazirite. He is forbidden from drinking a wine. You now hand it over to him, like in a cocktail party, here is the wine. 
or um, a uh, son of Noach applied to universal Noach high laws, you bring an Evo Minachai, so you are basically um, cause them to stumble over something that they are forbidden. Talmud Lomar, but before you go, you don't make sure. You should not stumble. Um, the Torah said in Vayikra, in Leviticus 19, before a blind, you don't put a stumbling block. Side note, Rav Cook, the first Rav Cook said that that's apply also to the midot, which means a person should not put a stumbling block before someone who's not familiar. Haleklavim shari. So you derive from that that you give it to, that's the way Rashi said and uh, the Tosfot also, he says that um, deriving benefit, deriving joy, that's um, not applied to the giving to the dogs, that's allowed. So here you see that ever minachai, you can derive a benefit, even the Torah said, lo tochal. So again, it challenged Rabbi Abao. So Shanei Rabbi Menachai, Rabbi Abba will respond, he says, no, that's Evel Menachai is different, the Itkash Ledam. Why? You remember we said that he's Muta Be'ana because we learn a Hekish from the water? So he said, Dichtiv, Rak Chazak Levil Dichol Dam Kedam Wa Nafesh, that's what we said in the Voring. So the same way that Dam, the blood, Muta Be'ana, so Evel Menachai also Muta Be'ana, the Chizkiah. Now the opposite way. The Chizkiah said that it's only if eating but not deriving benefit so the, the, what's the purpose of Allah he juxtaposed ever minachai to blood he said Amar lecha damu de itkash le'ever minachai ma'er ever minachai asur av dam minachai asur the same way as the ever minachai is forbidden dam is also forbidden Rashi here will have klomar we don't have the time but it's based on the Gemara in Sanhedrin uh, 59 um, um, and they said here, ve'eze zedam hakaza shanefesh yotzabu. So um, um, I need just uh, one word to explain what's involved here. The Torah said, rak chazak libilti yechol adam. Be careful, be strong, not to eat um, the blood. And then the Torah said, ve'zavachta mibkarcha o mitzoncha. That's the prohibition, as we said. Um, um, something that come out of slaughtering. So you see here that it's also Baal Khila, that is forbidden uh, to eat, but in Muta Baana, for example, we just said fertilize um, um, fields. Yeah. fields. Mm -hmm. So it's good. So Rashi here again explain in the Kloman, he said, Zedam Akaza, Vezi Zedam Kaza, Shanefish Otabu. So there is more in Kritu 22 that said that there are four steps of, of using the blood. The number one, you see the blood coming out slowly. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's coming um, Four different kinds of blood, right here. Yeah. And it's like light red. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes black. Mm -hmm. And then it's dripping. So that's the prohibition. It's applied to any blood that it's coming out of the animal. That's included in that uh, prohibition. Just let finish. So they said, there is a very... Um, well-known concept that um, if you have a ox that deserves to be stoned, you know, that they create mm -hmm. um, um, a situation that they kill people, etc. Right. So you have to uh, put the um, death penalty. So the same way it's not allowed to have Inu Yadin, which means someone who deserves execution, you have to do it as soon as possible. The same applies to animals, you don't delay it. And the Torah said, Velo yacheret besorot. The Torah said in Shemot, in, in um, Exodus 21, you should not eat the meat. V'tanya mimash mo shnemar sakol yisakel ashur, and yudaya shi nevela, ve nevela asur abana. So that's obvious, because it said it's nevela, nevela, it's, it's a dead, it's forbidden to drive any, any benefit. Matan mud lomar lo yachel. So why the Torah looks like Ed is superfluous wall? So they said, Magil lecha katuv shim shchato lachar shnegmar dino asur. That if you slaughter it after the, it's already making a decision um, 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 to slaughter it, to, to kill it, it's forbidden to eat. Only How do you know that it's uh, forbidden to drive any joy? That the, the owner of the ox will be clear. So what does that mean? Uh, so, so it means that a regular ox that didn't cause that uh, 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 damage. The owner is free of any um, blame. And 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 um, he said, my mashma. So how do you drive it? Shimon ben Zoma Omer, 
כדרך שאדם אומר לחברו, יצא פלוני נקי מנכסיו ואין לו בהם הנאה של כלום. So a person has no derive, has no benefit at all. So but the owner of the ox should be clear means that there's no benefit from the ox. So um, since we're running out of time, we'll continue um, tomorrow. First halacha is in regard to, to the Gid the, the senior sciatic nerve. Uh, this is Shulchan Ochi or 65. One may send the thigh of an animal to a non-Jew without removing the sciatic nerve, even the presence of a, another fellow Jew. There's no concern that other Jew will eat the sciatic nerve since in the period that is not being removed. And the idea is the sciatic nerve has no taste and uh, it uh, fell into the uh, stew with uh, other meat. It's permitted to eat the other meat. Uh, that's the way that Gemara said in Hulin. Uh, we explain that if one eats this sciatic nerve of a non-kosher animal, he is exempt from punishment because the prohibition is only applies to a kosher animal. Um, in addition, sinews are not considered to be meat. It's, it's considered not to have the legal status of not kosher meat. That's the Rambam. Ilchot Machalot Asurot, Chapter 8. Uh, although it's prohibited to eat the sciatic nerve, it's permitted to benefit from it. And we explain also Meila Bedama Kodashim. We said that if one uses sacrificial blood to drain into the, um, uh, use it to fertilize uh, his, uh, so he needs to pay to the temple treasury. If he didn't do it, he's violated the prohibition against uh, misuse of consecrated property. So that's the rabbinic law, and that's again Rambam Hilchot Meila, uh, uh, Chapter 2. Um, we also explain the concept of lifnei ivel, that it is prohibited to, um, to offer a cup of wine to an Ezirite or a limb from a living animal to a descendant of Noah when it's prohibited item is a place a person cannot be uh, reached by himself. That's the Sefer Mitzvot Gadol, uh, negative mitzvah 168, and we said also that that's applied and not only to literal, but also the figurative nerve, and the example we brought is from the first of Cook.